Uh, let me talk about the upcoming lab. I mean, you don't have to read this content. I just am putting it just more for my reference. So, in the upcoming lab, one of the things you are going to do is learn about a few tools. The TCP dump and Wireshark are two tools which are extremely useful. Uh, not only to understand how the protocols work, but also these are system administrators uh, best friends, because you use it for debugging the performance of the network. So, what the TCP dump and Wireshark tools do is they monitor whatever traffic is going out of your machine as well as coming into your machine. Not only this, they are also capable of monitoring what all traffic is going in the local area network as well. Beyond that is not feasible, but that itself can provide lot of information. So, what we are going to do in this lab is learn these tools and use these tools to understand certain concepts like multiplexing and demultiplexing as well as the um, protocol headers. So, the relevant slides that will help you understand all this is this OSI protocol stack as well as interlayer communication. I will uh, talk a little bit about it as we go forward. So, the first thing that you are going to do in the lab is basically play around with TCP dump Wireshark. Apart from that, there are a few other tools like ping, arp, root, if config, host. Uh, this is just for you, I mean we will dig in more details in the other labs, but for now I just want you to understand what these tools are, what does ping do, what does arp do, what does root do, what does if config do, what does host do. I do not want you to kind of dig too much in detail just to understand what their functionality is. Apart from this, so typically if this is your machine, this is your laptop and you are plugging it into your let us say this is your local area network which in turn is connected to some routers and then it kind of plugs into the internet. So, this is the typical setting in most places. So, before you can communicate to the outside internet, there are certain things your machine should know. One is it needs to know what its IP address is. Typically, you obtain this through DHCP, we would not cover DHCP yet. But you need an IP address, your machine has an IP address. So, how do you know what is your IP address? That is something you will learn. Apart from this, before for example, let us say you want to contact the website www.google.com, this is a URL, but you need to know what the IP address of Google is. So, in order to determine what the IP address of Google is, you use this DNS service. In order to use the DNS service, you need to know what the DNS server is before you can communicate. This information is also stored on your laptop. So, where is this information stored and how do you use it? All that also you will kind of get to know. And once you assemble a packet, once DNS told you this is the IP address of Google, then what you are going to do is you are assembling a packet saying I want uh, the main page of Google. So, this is a packet which has some HTTP content, then you add some TCP headers, then you add some network headers, then you add some link headers and then you are kind of pushing it out onto the LAN. Now, in order to send this, who do you send it to? You need to know who your next hop router is. Now, this information also your machine should have some place. So, what you are going to do in this first lab is you are going to explore what you are going to do is you are going to look at some of these files called host name files, interfaces files, resolve.conf, protocol files to figure out where some of this information is stored. That will tell you what is happening within your machine. Apart from this, you will also make use of the TCP dump Wireshark to figure out what is the traffic that is coming into your system as well as leaving your system. 
the rest of the tools like ping arp root if config host will also explain some of this stuff related to this diagram so that is the first exercise so this is just for you to learn around so if you see the exercises it's not a spoon feeding exercise in other words i am not telling do this this is what you will observe do that this is what you will observe because that doesn't help in learning um, what this is doing is it will ask you to play around and then I am going to ask you some questions. So if you have understood what the role of each of those files is and you understood what the role of each of the command is, then you should be able to answer these simple questions that are asked as part of exercise 2. Apart from this, we will also look at the concept of encapsulation and demultiplexing. So let me again uh, pull up a few slides related to that. So, so this slides were covered as part of the interlayer communication, I mean uh, this is a part of the concept under introduction. So I will skip all this. So the point of relevance here is you may I mean I am explaining the background so that you will appreciate the lab better, this is something which you should already know by now. So these application generates these messages, so for example this could be a get HTTP request and then the transport layer adds a header, network layer adds a header, link layer adds a header, physical layer also adds a header and then it goes to your next hop which could be a router which will in turn go to the next hop so on all the way to the other end and then again this thing goes on. So this is how things are. So the concept of multiplexing, demultiplexing, so there are two things that are happening here. One is encapsulation as we have seen, so what I have shown here is encapsulation, this is the encapsulation and decapsulation that is happening. So as part of the lab we will look at all these different headers to see that indeed whatever message you are sending is being encapsulated in this fashion. So you look at transport layer headers, network layer headers, link layer headers and you will also see how who is this passing this packet to, who is your next hop. So all that information also you are going to see as part of the lab, apart from that you will also see this concept of demultiplexing. So in other words at once you receive a packet from the physical layer, there are many protocols at the link layer, there is ARP, there is Ethernet, who do you send this packet to? So ideally sometimes if you are using ARP, you want to send the packet to this ARP module. If you want, if you are using Ethernet framing, you want to send it to Ethernet. So based on the frame type you decide who to send it to. Once you get at the link layer, depending upon whether it is an ICMP packet or an IP packet or a routing packet you have to send it to the appropriate protocol. So then you will use some other information to kind of guide it. So here in this case you will use frame type to, <coughs> uh, so you will use the protocol field to guide it to the relevant thing and similarly if you are operating here uh, one layer above will you send the packet to TCP module or to UDP module, again protocol field is going to help you send it to the right module and similarly there are many applications at the top, so who do you send it to, do you send it to HTTP or do you send it to SMTP or FTP, again port number plays a role here, so if it is port number 80 you will send it to HTTP, if it is some other port you send it to some other thing. So this concept of demultiplexing also there is a specific exercise that is going to, so for example one exercise is on encapsulation and demultiplexing, there is another exercise that also tests how do packets gets demultiplexed. So this is what you are going to learn as part of the lab. I will now show you how TCP dump and Wireshark work together. So one question which uh, lot of the coordinators had at the time when we did this workshop is why are you using both TCP dump and Wireshark? Wireshark by itself will suffice, Wireshark has a very nice graphical user interface, so when you look at it, it uh, shows very cleanly what is happening. TCP dump does not have a graphical user interface, so both tools you can use by themselves. Um, so I prefer to use both TCP dump and Wireshark, so the way I do it is I use TCP dump at command line to capture packets and then I capture all the packets into a file and then I open the file on Wireshark and use the graphical user interface to view it. There is no reason why you should use TCP dump, you could go directly with Wireshark, but 
both are very useful tools it's good to know more than one tool apart from that i personally like the command line interface of tcp dump whatever filters you want to give you just give it at the command line and it will capture only those packets that pass the filter so let me give an example so here is a terminal so what i am doing this is more or less a terminal that you will be using there as well so what i am doing is i am running tcp dump so this is the command i can specify if you have more than one interface which typically you may not may not have this is not needed but i am specifying explicitly to capture packets on the ethernet interface which stands for e0 so if i did something like this it's listening and as you can see it just prints lot of these packets okay so it will capture lot of unnecessary traffic more or less any broadcast traffic that is happening on the lan it is going to capture apart from whatever packets are coming and going on to this machine you don't want to do that because then the trace file becomes painfully large to examine so often so for example so what i will do is i am going to restrict that it capture packets only corresponding to for example uh so what i'm going to do is i'm going to restrict it to capture packets corresponding to 10.105.103 this is the this 10.105.103 is the ip address of our csc web server so all i'm saying is i'm now going to contact this 10.105.103 so i'm specifying capture only packets which have source ip address or destination ip address corresponding to this so this is what i call a filter now when i apply this filter as you can see since no traffic is going to that particular web server you don't see any traffic being captured notice that whenever you use tcp dump and so let me go back so typically in any of this exercises there is an order you want to Uh, do some activity so basically those are in the form of commands so for example you may want to do ping or you may want to ssh or you may want to use something called wget wget is uh, basically it's acting like a browser instead of a browser comes with lot of overhead wget is a very simple browser type thing whatever url you specify it will just get that particular url i'll show you how this works so all of the, are these commands which are going to generate traffic so what you should do is this is the sequence in which you should do the experiments first you should run tcp dump with the right filters okay so this is the first thing you should do you should run tcp dump with right filters so the tcp dump is now going to listen for packets then you have to execute whatever commands you want for example if you did the commands first and then run tcp dump then i mean there is commands are the ones that are generating traffic and tcp dump has to capture the traffic so tcp dump has to run first so that it can capture the traffic that is being generated by the commands so this you will do and then after you execute the commands and you get out of it then you start to analyze whatever is the trace file for which in our case we are going to use wireshark so this is the sequence of steps that we are going to follow so given that let's again go back to the thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to run tcp dump with this particular host okay so it is kind of listening on that and then see as you can see it is still listening let me pull the other so this is another terminal so uh, i know there was lot of confusion let me repeat so there is one terminal where i'm running tcp dump which is listening for traffic that has source or destination as 10.105.103 that is our web server so i'll just ping okay so when i ping it is going to send some packets as you can see 
you can see these pink packets as part of the TCP dump. So, crea.it.iitp.ac.in is the name of my machine and beam.csc.itb.ac.in is the name of the WW web server. So, as you can see you saw a bunch of uh, pink packets. Typically, I do not want it to go there because it will scroll very fast. I would like it to be saved in a file. So, for which I will use minus w option and I am going to say this is a trial.pcap that is the name of the file I am uh, going to give it. So, again I am doing the same thing. So, again I am kind of pinging as you can see you cannot see anymore because it is writing into that file. Okay. I can generate some more traffic. So, for example, let me say I want I am just getting this particular web page. So, as you can see it sent the HTTP request. I got the 200 OK which is the HTTP reply and then whatever information this index.html file it has saved. Okay, so, this is what wget is doing. So, there is some traffic that has happened as part of wget. So, this is how you run some commands to generate traffic and then I am going to close this. So, as you can see it captured 38 packets as part of TCP dump. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to open this file here. So, let me get that file from my machine and I am going to open it in Wireshark. So, this is a Wireshark which provides a very nice user interface. So, as you saw to begin with we did a ping. So, you can see lot of ICMP messages. So, it specifies at what time this is a relative time it sequence number also it kind of relatively over time this is the first packet I received second packet I received these are the times at which I received the packet. This is the source this is the destination what is the protocol type what is the length of the packet so on is captured here. So, if you select one specific packet. So, for example, if I select the fifth packet, it is going to give information about the fifth packet here. So, for example, this is the link layer. This is the link layer header. So, as you can see now you can start to see MAC um, information. This is the destination MAC, this is the source MAC. This is the IP layer header. As you can see source is this IP address this is the destination IP address. You could also see the ICMP headers. So, this is with respect to ICMP. Now, as you can see there is a this is the wget portion of it. This is the famous TCP handshake SYN, SYNAC and ACK. As you can see there is a TCP connection established. This does not have any HTTP uh, load, but if I click on this you will see that there is a HTTP packet as well. So, that says get it is asked to get this particular uh, URL. I mean this is just for your information there is lot of TCP packets that have uh, transferred all of this you will dig in deep and understand it in detail. Uh, one thing let me also mention in Wireshark what you see here in this blue portion is the specific bytes associated with this. So, for example, if I were to select this this is a port number. So, the port number is A387. So, it does not match 41863. You are wondering what is it? This is in hexadecimal. So, if you convert it, it will match that particular port number. So, whatever information is in here. So, for example, if I select this portion, this is the uh, this is the MAC address in hexadecimal. So, it directly matches. So, this is the so this is a basically more or less the content of your packet in hexadecimal. So, you can select individual fields and figure out where what is. I will let you anyway dig in deep with respect to Wireshark as you do the exercises. So, more or less this is the lab overview. So, I can take a few quick questions no more than 2, 3 and we will break for tea. Uh, at 11.30 you are supposed to assemble in your labs um, and uh, get started. So, we will also be available here to help you with any issues. Um, so, any questions? Hello. Yeah, ma'am. Sometimes when you are going to use TCP dump uh, command, uh, it's not working in our machine. But when I am working sudo before that one, then that's working. Yeah, yeah. So 
PCP dump requires route permissions for you to because you are monitoring the traffic. TCP dump requires route permissions, but in the scripts we have provided to the coordinators, we have also given how to change the permission such that you can run TCP dump not as a route. That information is there under bodhitree.csc under references, there is that entire directory we have shared with you. Uh, there are some scripts to change the permissions of TCP dump. So if you run that, you will be able to run TCP dump as a user as well. But in case it is not working off or whatever, yeah, the, the setup should have happened before. Okay ma'am, thank you. Ma'am, I have two questions. The question number one is that, with the help of wide network method, data transformation is easy. If it is possible to add encryption for transformation of electronic data with the help of Wireshark or NS2? See, Wireshark and uh, Wireshark and TCP dumps are dumb things. All they are doing is whatever traffic is going out and into your system, they are just making a copy of it. So, if you uh, I had mentioned this, so this is your machine, this is a protocol stack, let us say in your machine you have phi, link, so on. So whatever packet comes, it has to go up the protocol stack, right. So this is a network layer, so on so forth. All TCP dump is doing is it is sitting somewhere here and is making a copy of whatever packet you are getting and uh, dumping it into a file and you are evaluating that particular thing too. So it is not, it is a very passive device. All it is doing is copying the packets that you are getting into the machine and similarly when it is going out, again it will make a copy of the packet and write it to a file. That is basically what TCP dump is, is doing. Any additional functionality you want to implement as part of the protocol stack, you actually have to, if you are doing it at the application layer, you have to write the code at the application layer. If you are do, want to do it at say a network layer or link layer, then you have to do kernel programming to implement that particular functionality. NS2 by the way is just a simulation tool. So if you want to implement, you are just implementing a module in NS2 that does that particular functionality. Thank you ma'am. I have last question. Is it possible to apply three tier structure of sharing security key? with the help of encryption in wide network and authentication is controlled by. Okay, let me, uh, so let me interrupt right away. So when you are asking questions, please ask questions relevant to the lab now because all these other questions I do not, I mean I will answer them, but we will do it in the clarification session and not now. The lab is going to start soon, so any questions you have with respect to the lab ask me now not uh, general questions. Thank you ma'am. Actually I had a question regarding Wireshark madam. Hmm. Uh, whether Wireshark is open source? It is freely available. You just have to, I mean I, I, there was no Wireshark on this machine. I just downloaded it and ran it. It just ran out of, it is a freely available Wireshark. The source code of it, I, I do not, I, I, it is very likely it is uh, open source. But I am saying it is a freely available tool. You just need to download it off the web and install it and it will work. It takes one minute, that is it. Uh, actually, uh, can we use Wireshark for uh, capturing the packets, not only to analyze? Yes, you can use Wireshark. Yes, you can do that. Yeah. So, as you can see, this is Wireshark. So, let me font is probably too small, but like I just opened Wireshark. There is something called capture here and there are interfaces. So you can select, for example, this has a Wi-Fi interface. I can select that interface and say start. Then it will start capturing packets on the Wi-Fi interface. As you can see, a lot of in packets are being captured. And you can stop it. That is okay. I was in. Um, we will try to fix it, but for now I am just showing you at a very high level what is happening. Uh, you can open Wireshark, there is something called capture at the top, click on it, select the interface and it will capture. Uh, Ma'am, uh, there was a line uh, when you were uh, uh, making us understand that zero packets were dropped by the kernel. Ma'am, what is that uh, concept behind that zero packets were dropped by the kernel? 
So sometimes you may be uh, your buffers within the link layer or whatever may not be enough. In other words, your for example, you connect to a 10 Gbps link, and uh, your processor it's like some 1980s machine, right? It cannot cope with the speed at which packets are coming. So it may drop some packets because it doesn't have enough buffer for them. So in case there are packets dropped because of that, it will indicate it there that or even when you are making it is more to do with the processor whether it is it Wireshark or TCP dump is able to make a copy properly or not. Ma'am and one more question, uh, can we use Ubuntu operating system while doing our lab experiments? Ubuntu operating system sir? If you are doing the lab experiments. Yeah, yeah. Lab yes, I, I mean I had shared Ubuntu only to all the workshop coordinators, yes. Uh, Ma'am I have a question uh, related to uh, computer network. Uh, which address belongs to different family? Uh, there are four address actually given. Uh, MAC address and IP address, physical address and hardware address. Hmm. So I have, uh, I am a uh, little confused in this. In this. Uh, please let me clarify that how, uh, which one is different and how. Okay. So typically the physical address, the MAC address and the hardware address all refer to the uh, MAC address itself. IP, so there are basically two addresses, IP address and the MAC address. Often the MAC address is also called the hardware address because it comes with the Ethernet card and uh, the same thing physical address also we refer it in that fashion. So physical hardware and MAC are the same, IP address is different. I can hear you. Hello, good morning ma'am. Ah. Please explain wget that command okay. you explained just now. Okay. See wget is a dumb browser, you can view it as like that. So typically in a browser at the top you specify the URL, right? HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com. So what wget is doing is basically is a dumb version which is uh, sending that get request on your behalf and getting the reply and saving it into, uh, I mean if you are getting index.html, it will just save that index.html. It is basically a dumb browser. Browsers these days are very sophisticated. They have lot of plugins. They do a uh, lot of uh, additional stuff. WGET does nothing like that. It is a very clean simple tool with just whatever URL it will just fetch it and uh, uh, typically over command line it is very useful. Like for example, if I am remotely logging into some place and I want to download a web page, but I do not want to pop up a browser because of whatever SSH. Uh, issues, then wget is a good tool. Thank you ma'am. Yeah. So, in the interest of time, I think we should break.